Good morning and welcome to you all, and thank you for joining us today for our service, whether you're with us here in person, having braved some rather heavy rain this morning, or whether you're joining us at home online, you are all very welcome. It is really an honour and a privilege to be able to gather, and I think the last year or so has really taught us what a privilege it is that we so often take for granted that we can gather. And... Um, it's something that I hope we will always remember as restrictions are eased and we can do things more normally, that this is a real privilege to be able to gather together in our own building um, to worship God together. And so as we start our service, I'm going to read Psalm 100, but not from a, a, a translation that you might be as familiar with. This is going to be from the Passion Translation. So a familiar psalm, but a slightly more unfamiliar wording. Psalm 100. Lift up a great shout of joy to Yahweh. Go ahead and do it. Everyone, everywhere. Worship Yahweh with gladness. Sing your way into his presence with joy. And realize what this really means. We have the privilege of worshiping Yahweh, our God. He is our creator, and we belong to him. We are the people of his pleasure. You can... You can pass through his open gates with a password of praise. Come right into his presence with thanksgiving. Come bring your thank offering to him and affectionately bless his beautiful name. For Yahweh is always good and ready to receive you. He is he's so loving that it will amaze you, so kind that it will astound you. And he is famous for his faithfulness toward all. Everyone knows our God can be trusted, for he keeps his promises to every generation. So as we begin our service, let's remember those ideas of singing our way into his presence with joy. Remembering the privilege of worshipping our God. That we want to come right into his presence with thanksgiving and affectionately bless that beautiful name of his. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father God, we do indeed thank you that we can gather this morning together. We acknowledge your presence with us by your spirit and ask that you would come and have your way this morning. Come and move us and change us. May we have soft, open hearts and just submit to your ways this morning. We welcome you, we praise you, we thank you, and we just worship your beautiful name. Amen. could ever satisfy through every trial my soul will see no turning back I've been set free Christ is enough for me Christ is enough Glory, Christ 
Thank you so much to our worship group for leading us so beautifully through worship, reminding us that it's not only a, I'll take it off now. It's not only a beautiful name, it is a truly powerful name, a name that nothing can stand against, that can break every chain. We're going to move on just to some of our notices. We have a few important notices to take note of, um, and we're going to start with a very lovely one. So I'm going to invite um, Joyce to come up and make that first announcement. Good morning, church. Um, a wonderful morning, even though we woke up this morning to lots of rain. Um, and can I say a happy Independence Day to any Americans or American supporters. But today is also a very special day for one of our members. Um, 
a, a day when that powerful name of Jesus led her to um, being of service to this church. Being, um, and the person I'm speaking about is Gwen Colnott. Gwen. <laughs> Gwen has been serving as the person in charge of the collections in this church for 50 years today. And, and she does more than that. We know that she does more than the collection. She oversees the flowers when we were able to have flowers. Um, she's the one that invigilates our, all our AGMs and, and our um, elections and makes sure that we're on the straight and narrow where our constitution is concerned. So she is, you know, and she's always here, cleaning up, helping to, keep the, the flowers and the weeds and whatever. So whatever she can turn her hand to, Gwen has been doing it for this past 50 years. And we want to honor her. We want to say thank you, and we want to ask God's blessing on her. So Gwen, can you make your way up here for me, please? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for all that you do in this church. And I ask God's blessings on you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I you? you want to say a few words? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Th thank you very much, everybody. Yeah, thank you very much, everybody. Yes, when I started counting the money, it was just six months after decimalization. <laughs> and the old money was still legal tender, as well as the new money. And I have here the book from 50 years ago. And um, it's... Um, the first week that I did it on the 4th of, of July. Um, but all the things were in pennies and halfpennies, and, um, you know, the, the uh, where are we? The total amount, no, where were we? Uh, I've forgotten what it was now. Uh, no, I can't see it quick. Oh, envelopes in communion. I, ca I can't see the amount now. But anyway, um, yes, it was a different amount of money, obviously, years ago. But um, it was quite a thing. We had to have lots of different things with um, all the old money and the new money. And gradually the old money has disappeared, of course, and the new money is there. And it's a lot more money. And we hope, we hope it will continue to be a lot more money. But uh, I just looked that out. I've got that at home. And I thought, well, I would bring it along this morning. Anyway, thank you very much. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for all your mercies. We thank you for bringing us here this morning. And we thank you for this occasion, dear Lord. We thank you that Gwen has been serving you faithfully over these past years, that she's doing your work whatever you have placed on her heart, dear God. I thank you that she responded and that she is doing the best she can. I ask, dear God, that you continue to bless her. Touch her body, dear Lord. We know that as we grow older, aches and pains happen. So, dear God, I just ask that you wrap your arms around her, protect her, and keep her in your will. 
In Jesus' name, amen. And we'll listen to us all about what it is to really serve faithfully, day in, day out, year in, year out. And, and just a, a wonderful thank you to Gwen for all, of, all that she does. As Joyce says, she does many, many other things in the life of the church. So thank you, Gwen. Um, another notice um, uh, that uh, Temi is going to come up and give you the details of our church meeting that's coming up in two weeks. Good morning, church. What a great testimony. 50 years, I checked that. That's 1971. A lot of us were not even born then. And God has been gracious. He's been faithful to us as a church. He's been faithful. He's kept uh, Gwen doing this work. And I'm challenged. And I hope and pray that we all are challenged too to continue to work for God. You know, as the Bible says, our labor of love will never be in vain. Whatever we do for God is not a debtor to any man. It will reward us. So let's just keep doing whatever our hands find to do. You know, sometimes we are called to do things. Sometimes we are not called. We offer. We, you know, say, I'm available. I volunteer. Let's continue to just walk in the house of God. So, yes, um, as it was announced last week, we are having the church meeting coming up in two weeks' time, two Sundays, 18th of July. It's also our annual general meeting, which we have once a year. And um, so we will have the annual general meeting, and we will then, once that is done, we will follow up with the church members' meeting, which is only... Um, available to church members. So, as we are the last time, we're going to have it availability online for those who are not able to come physically to the building. But we want to encourage as many people as are able to, to please come to the sanctuary. The sanctuary has been uh, uh, risk assessed, so we can have up to 90 people, both downstairs and upstairs. So that will take uh, a lot of people. So please come. If you are not able to come, whether because you're still shielding or for other reasons, then you can join via Zoom. But via Zoom has a few challenges. Uh, you will be, you need to be screened and checked that you are a member, so you will be kept in the waiting room, and as you checked, then you will be uh, uh, brought into the meeting. And um, if you do have questions, if you do have comments, uh, the challenge is that you're not able to actually ask your question because of the nature of the meeting and the sanctuary and all of that. So you will write out your questions, comments, pass it on to uh, the person coordinating the meeting, the Zoom meeting, we will then pass it on to uh, the leaders organizing the, uh, 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 coordinating the meeting. So that's the procedure. So yes, if you cannot come to the sanctuary, you can join us. It's, uh, uh, you are able to join the meeting and you will get all the information and everything, but there may be a few challenges in terms of if you have questions to ask. So we do encourage you. So please come. It will start at 11.30, which is about the time we finish the morning service. And um, we've got the minutes and the agenda with my able leaders at the back, Joyce and Robert. After the service, if you are a church member, Please go up to either of them and collect a copy of the agenda as well as the minutes of the April meeting. Uh, what else? I think that's it. So I think that's it. 
So please, uh, if you are watching the service online and you are not physically in the sanctuary today, if you are able to come next week, you make sure you get your minutes and agenda. If you are not able to, please call the church office and speak with uh, Esther. We will make sure you, she sends one out to you. Thank you very much. Bless you. Yes, and if you do have any concerns about how to join the Zoom meeting, um, again, just email or um, telephone Esther in the office and we'll try and get you more comfortable with that before um, the meeting in two weeks. It is very important, if you are joining via Zoom, that you put your, um, your, your actual full name um, in the display so that we can actually see who you are so we can let you out the waiting room. We had a couple of people last time where it was just displaying, you know, iPhone or Galaxy tablet and they hadn't put their name and so we were unable to admit them. So again, if that's something you're not sure of how to do, um, phone the office or try and speak to somebody, a friend or um, a, a grandchild who might know a bit more about how to use Zoom so that you're able to display your proper name because we need to check it against a list of, um, of registered members. Um, so any problems, do just get, get in contact with us if you can um, before. And yes, as Tammy said, you will be able to send some comments, but it's not going to be as easy to actively ask questions. But the people who joined last time seem to find it a very valuable way of just being able to keep in touch. Um, with what was going on in the meeting, even though they, they couldn't be there in person. And a uh, notice about um, COVID just from Simon, Dr. Simon. Hi, hi everybody. You remember last time we were talking about this? Have you all seen these? Um, this is the lateral flow test to see if you are infected with COVID that uh, the government wants everybody to, to be doing about twice a week. And you can get them from the chemist, as a pharmacist, any pharmacist, or online. What I didn't make clear last week, and this is a very important distinction, this is a test for people without symptoms at all. This is routine testing. Now, if you do have symptoms, and now, nowadays, the, the symptomatology has moved on, it's not just cough, fever, loss of taste and smell, it's also sore throat, headache, runny nose. Because it's presenting in all sorts of different ways now. And if that happens for that, you do not do a lateral flow test because it's not accurate enough to say for certain. So in other words, if it's negative, it might be, or, a significant small number of them could be a false negative. So in that situation, you ring 119. You may want to write this down if you're not familiar with it, um, to, to get through, and they will give you a what's, what's called a PCR test. That's a test that somebody does on you. So it's lateral flow test is non-symptomatic people, routine testing twice a week. PCR test which is done to you, having rung 119 and been given a venue and an appointment, is for people with symptoms. Thank you. I just took a couple of more brief notices, just to um, say that uh, the details of how to connect to the Zoom meeting will be in, for the church meeting, will be in the newsletter and on the website in the, in the coming uh, week. Um, this coming Saturday, there is the um, fortnightly men's prayer meeting. Details are on the website. And as always, we have our Friday telephone prayer meeting. And I just want to encourage you to check out the website, which is westcroydon.com, which has all the information to sign up for our newsletter. And um, if in doubt, just telephone Esther in the office, who will be happy to um, give you any information that you need, particularly if you're not able to access the internet or email easily. Um, we were talking about Gwen's faithful service in um, counting our offering uh, every week. Um, if you're here in the building, you are able to give your offering at the end of the service. Um, as you go out that way, there will be somebody with a plate. If you want to put cash or envelopes into that plate, you can do that. Um, but also you can give online 
details of how you can give one-off donations or set up a standing order are on our website. So please do that if you can to um, help continue the, the work of our church in this community and in the world. And, um, and uh, I'm sure Gwen would be love, love to have an extra amount of money to count today to honour her on, her on her anniversary of 50 years. So offering you can do online or when you leave the sanctuary today. Before we um, hear the word that uh, Rory is going to bring to us today, let's come to God in prayer. We've already been singing and hearing about what a powerful name uh, our Lord has, the power to break every chain. So let's come before him now um, with, our, with our prayers and petitions together. Let's pray. Father, your word says in Philippians not to be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, to present our request to God. And that peace which transcends all understanding will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And so we come together now, gather together, and just bring some of the concerns, just some of the concerns and things that are on our hearts today, and lift them up to you. Father God, we continue to pray into this COVID pandemic situation, which has been going on for so long. We thank you for the good news that um, the vaccine rollout is continuing to progress well in our country. But we pray for all those other countries around the world where um, the story is not the same and they are struggling to get supplies and to get their... Um, to get people in their country vaccinated. Lord God, we pray that that situation would change and that there would be a fair way to see that everybody gets uh, the vaccination that needs it. We thank you that um, the number of hospitalizations and deaths remains relatively low, but we are concerned about the continuing spread of the Delta variant, which seems to be increasingly um, trans, uh, incredibly transmissible, Lord. And so we pray that you would help us all to be sensible as restrictions look to be eased and as there is more casual mixing over the summer period, whether it's on holiday, whether it's watching the football and just meeting up with friends, that we would still remain vigilant and take great care. And we pray for wisdom for ministers as they look at safe ways of easing restrictions we pray for wisdom, Lord, that they would not be um, unduly pressured to make changes which are not right. So we commit that into your hands and every minister and health advisor that is working on this, that they would make the right decisions. And again, as we reach the school holidays and restrictions are eased, we know that there is a fear in some com in communities and with the police that there will be an increase in violence on our streets. We're all too aware of some of the terrible things that have gone on in recent times. And as things are relaxed further and, and, and school finishes for the summer, we just pray against an escalation in violence. We pray for a breakthrough, particularly we think of our borough of Croydon and the tragedies that we have um, witnessed over the last few years. We pray for a break, a breakthrough in that. We pray for peace. We pray that communities would stand up and they would speak out if they know of perpetrators of violence. We pray that you would give courage to those who are caught up in, this, in these gangs and in these situations to say no and give them your protection, Lord. We want to see an end to this violence too young people especially, losing their lives and ruining their lives for nothing. And show us how we can help, how we can work together with community groups, with other churches to play our part in seeing a breakthrough in violence on our streets. We pray for all those who mourn in Miami after the collapse of that apartment block on the 24th of June. For those who have been holding out hope that loved ones would be rescued and now see that hope diminish 
as they race to demolish the building before this tropical storm hits in the next couple of days. Father God, we cannot imagine what they are going through. We've still so many people left unaccounted for. We pray you would put your Father arms around each and every person that grieves, Lord. Bring that community together to support each other. And we pray for all of those living in other apartment blocks who are in fear and scared, Lord. We pray for wisdom for the authorities to do what is right, to see that people are protected and not left in unsafe accommodation a moment longer. And we pray that the strength of that storm would be taken out, Lord, to prevent any further devastation. And we pray for the wildfire in Cyprus that's, that's raging at the moment. We pray that people would be kept safe and that would come under control. And it highlights to us again that we are in the midst of an environmental crisis. May we not be blind to it and as Christians engage in what is going on. There seem to be so many reports of extreme weather conditions and the devastation that they cause. Help us to be mindful to that and to engage and to think about what we can do and what part we can play. We thank you for this world that you've given us. You've given it to us to look after, to enjoy. And we're sorry for the way that we've treated it so carelessly. Help us to be better stewards of everything that you have blessed us with and not to take anything for granted. We thank you, Father God, for your loving kindness, your gentleness and your care. And we pray all of this in the strong and mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so I'd like to welcome Rory, Rory McLeod, um, one of our own up to come and bring God's word to us today. Well, good morning, church. It is uh, an honour and a privilege to, uh, uh, to, to be here, and I, I trust we'll all be blessed. I was certainly blessed by the, uh, the worship, so thank you, worship team. I trust I don't need that, as uh, I'm wired. It all seems to be working. Thank you. As I say, for, for those who don't know me, I'm Rory McLeod, been a long-time member of this church, not quite as long as Gwen, but uh, been here quite some time. I have some interest in, the, uh, in the looking after this church building, some of my responsibilities, but it's not about the building that I want to speak to you. I want to speak to you about kindness. We have the, uh, yes, kindness and covenants. Kindness. Well, why kindness? Well, firstly, kindness is part of the fruit of the Spirit. The verse, fairly well-known verse in Galatians, if I can remember it all, so the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's the middle one. Kindness, it's part of the fruit of the Spirit. If we're living in the Spirit, we're expected to model and display kindness in our behaviour. Um, so it is, it is important. So what is kindness? Well, it can be verbal, it can be an action, but basically it's motivated by sympathy, consideration, benevolence, wanting to do well to another person or to a group of people or to or for some other purpose. It's not something you have to do, it's something that you may do something you choose to do and if you do it kindness begets kindness people who receive kindness are likely to show you kindness so it all helps to improve on society some of you may remember back in Reuben's day um, he, he spoke about the fruit of the spirit and I can't for the life of me know why the favourite fruit of this church is mango. But uh, that was one of his results of his straw survey. But be that as it may, I want to talk about kindness 
and also its relationship with covenant. And to do that, we want to look into the story, an Old Testament story, concerning a character called Mephibosheth. I have to practice that. Some of the Old Testament names are quite difficult. Mephibosheth. So, the reading is taken from 2 Samuel 9, verses 1 to 8. So it should appear on the screen. Yeah. The, the setting, it's um, when David's battles with uh, um, Saul, uh, the former king of, uh, of, of Israel, had sort of come to an end. Um, he'd been persecuted by Saul, and he'd had other battles, and David had established his kingdom. Saul and his son Jonathan had been killed in battle with the Philistines, and now David was king. So the reading. David asked, Is there anyone still left in the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now there was a servant of Saul's household named Ziba. They called him to appear before David, and the king said to him, Are you Ziba? Your servant, he replied. The king asked, Is there no one still left in the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? Ziba answered the king, There is still a son of Jonathan. He is crippled in both feet. Where is he? the king asked. Ziba answered, He is at the house of Machir, son of Amiel in Lodibar. So the king David had him brought from Lodibar, from the house of Machir, son of Amiel. When Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honour. David said, Mephibosheth, your servant, he replied. Don't be afraid, David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather Saul, and you will always eat at my table. Mephibosheth bowed down and said, What is your servant that you should notice a dead dog like me? May the Lord bless his reading to us. I want to examine this story through two perspectives, two lenses. Firstly, from David's perspective, and then secondly, from Mephibosheth's perspective. Firstly, David. Why did he show this act of kindness? You read in verse 1, he says, To whom can I show kindness for Jonathan's sake? And in verse 3, To whom can I show God's kindness? So this was a kindness that was not just from himself. He saw it tied in somehow with his relationship with God. And it was for Jonathan's sake. So what was the position with, with Jonathan? And this is where, where we come into the context of a covenant. So we have to go back a little bit earlier into 1 Samuel. And um, 1 Samuel 18, verses 1 to 4, where um, Saul is still king. And David has been summoned to join him as part of his entourage. It's not from, from the time of David beats Goliath. But it says, after David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. From that day, Saul kept David with him and did not let him return to his father's house. 
And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Jonathan took off the robe he was wearing and gave it to David, along with his tunic and even his sword, his bow and his belt. So this, this was an unusual act of behaviour. David's star was rising. Jonathan was the heir. David could have been seen as the rival who might take away the throne from Jonathan, a throne that should rightly have been Jonathan's after Saul died. But Jonathan loved and he cared for David. He recognised the calling on David's life and he made a covenant with, with David that they would look after each other and that they would look to the interests of each other and that that would pass down the generations so that whatever happened, that covenant would bind. And they saw that as part of their service to God. So Jonathan was dead. Saul's family had been decimated. And David wonders, is there anyone left to whom I can show kindness? Out of honouring that covenant. And of course, there was. So he summoned Mephibosheth and he demonstrated that kindness. He said, you will always eat at my table. So he saw it as something he didn't have to do, but that it was, that, well, it was a discretionary act to how he didn't have to do it, but he felt he did have to do it because of the covenant. He wanted to honour that covenant that he made with Jonathan all those years before. Now what about Mephibosheth? What was his perspective? Was he aware of the covenant? Did he realise that he had any entitlement because of this covenant? Well, he got off to a bad start in life. We read in the version that he was crippled. In some versions it talks about him being lame. We go back to 2 Samuel 4, verse 4. This is the incident when um, Saul had been defeated. He'd been killed, and Jonathan had been killed, and there was panic in the land. Jonathan, son of Saul, had a son who was lame in both feet. He was five years old when the news came about Saul and Jonathan, it came from Jezreel. His nurse picked him up and fled, but as she hurried to leave, he fell and became crippled. His name was Mephibosheth. Must have been a bad fall. He was crippled. He'd had a poor start. He was living in a place called Lodibar, Lodibar means pastureless. In an agricultural society, that was an impoverished place. He was living in a certain degree of, of poverty. And you suspect that his attitude was not right. He referred to himself as a dead dog. He had a poor self-esteem and it may be an element of self-pity. He was a prince in poverty, but he was brought to a position of acceptance and abundance. He was blessed by an act of kindness. Verse 7 of um, the main reading. So David said, don't be afraid. 
For I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your son, Father Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul. You will always eat at my table. So somehow the land, which had been his entitlement, had been taken away from him as well. So there he was in Lodibar, a place of impoverishment, without the land to which he was entitled to, and without any action taken on his behalf in relation to a covenant to which he was entitled. We don't know whether he was really in, in full awareness of that, but um, he was entitled. The benevolence, his entitlements, only came about because of the act of David. This act of kindness was undeserved in relation to what Mephibosheth had done. It was unexpected. And although the covenant had existed, it had not been called in. It was only realised through David's kindness. Now you might think, well, that's all very good. What's that got to do with us? Well, we have a covenant relationship too. It's not one made between two people who are mortal. Our covenant is with a living God. It is the gospel. We are saved by his grace, the grace of Jesus the grace of God and his kindness. And it is a blood covenant. That means it's a strong covenant in Jesus' blood. And there are many scriptures that confirm that. One, one of the most familiar. Every time we meet and take communion, Paul's letter to the uh, Corinthians is often read out. And after talking about the bread, he says, in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. A new covenant in my blood. And we are part of that. That was, again, undeserved, uninspected but it's a kindness of God we weren't entitled to it but we can claim it but I think sometimes the problem is that we don't claim that part of the covenant that we are entitled to are we really looking to God in the way that we can the way that he promised us Last week, we were, our preacher, I guess preacher was looking at the life of uh, Jacob. Jacob's backstory was one of deceit, of uh, trying to trick people, not one of loyalty. But God made a call on his life and honour to promise him. And even though jo Jacob didn't fully exercise his trust in what God was saying, he met him sort of halfway, a bit more than halfway. God still honoured him. And out of his kindness, honoured that part of the arrangement that God said he would do. There are many scriptures that talk about God's kindness and his, um, his benevolence to us through the covenants. I just want to read something from Ephesians 2. This is 6 and 7. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. God's grace is expressed in his kindness to us. We can be kind to others because God has been kind to us. And if the Spirit flows through us, that will be manifest in our behaviour.
So, take it on to the next stage. How, how do we do this? I want to introduce you to the AA, not the Automobile Association, not Alcoholics Anonymous. It's not a three-point sermon, it's a two-point sermon. The AA, it's to do with attitude and actions. Attitude, the right attitude. The right attitude is modelled by David. We should look to God. We should look to the covenant. We should look to his power. We were singing about his power and his presence today. We should look to God's guidance. The wrong attitude is modelled by Mephibosheth. We can look to ourselves. We can look to our problems. We can look to our poor start in life. We may not have lame feet. Maybe we're crippled in some other way through some poor relationship, some other physical ailment. And we might be prone to self-pity. We might be we might have problems in other relationships at work. And we look at the size of these problems. And we look at our past failures. And we're consumed with ourselves rather than looking to God's power and God's capability and God's love for us and what he can do through us. So don't let any lameness, any crippledness hold us back. In the story we looked at, Mephibosheth, he wasn't healed. He remained lame. But he was still blessed. He lived a life of acceptance and abundance. But he was still lame. So don't let your misfortunes, your past, your lameness, hold you back in looking for God's blessing to be brought in your life. He is all-powerful. So then get the right attitude first. Because without it, the actions are likely to be wrong. Look to God. The actions. Well, first of all, kindness is discretionary. It's something we don't have to do. But it's something we may do. It's not like paying taxes. If you take a financial example, you have to pay your taxes to government. If, you, if you're employed, it's mandatory. But you have money there afterwards. And you can choose to give some of it away. And some of you may want to give some to, maybe to national charities or good causes. It's something you, you choose to do because you think that's worthwhile. So that's just one example of how you, you're giving your kindness can be done at the level of society. I've indicated three possible levels in which your discretionary acts of kindness could be manifest, but you know, there, there are many. I want, want to just highlight others. Now, Simon's already been up once this morning, but last week, when uh, he, uh, he, he came up, I must admit, I, I, was, I was convicted, so I've been to the chemist, I've got my lateral flow test and as an act of kindness to you good people, I took the test yesterday so that when I take my mask off, when I speak to you, I know that I have had a negative result. I had no symptoms, but I thought, well, do I need to do it? I don't have to do it. Simon asked the question, how many of you last week have ever taken a, a lateral flow test? And I have to admit, I was one that had never taken one. I wasn't sure I really needed to. I had no symptoms. But as an act of kindness to society, to people at large, that's something you, you could do. Um, some of you old enough may remember the children's game. Simon says... Will you do this action or don't do this action? Well, Simon has spoken. 
Simon said, and I did what he said. And I've never been so grateful to receive negative feedback. So what about the level of church? You can give financially, and you can give of your time. We've, we've heard today of someone who's given of her time for 50 years. Maybe the Lord is nudging someone here to pick up a, a new layer of the service. In the year 2071, the people up on this platform can honour you for your 50 years of service. But maybe the Lord isn't calling you to serve for quite as long as that. It may be something shorter. It might be just a one-off act. But there are lots of ways in which you can show kindness. Just as a couple of examples. You heard... um, A few weeks back, we had a break-in in the church with a lot of damage done in the office. Cupboard doors broken, pedestal, someone smashed it, just a little bit of cash. Um, our Romanian friends who use our premises, they had a work day a few weeks back. All those cupboards have been repaired and as part of their work day, they, they decided to tidy up our car park. We did it, picked up all the litter, picked up all the litter from the moat, we go around the front and look at the moat, it's clean. They didn't have to do that. As an act of kindness, they did that and I thank them for it. Acts of kindness can be done as a team or, or, or individually, but um, another act of a sort of team. You know, we, have, we have the Refugee Day Centre and there are a number of volunteers here who work to help people who are less fortunate in providing food and clothing. And it's a good atmosphere in that team, but you're showing kindness to people who are in need. Not because you have to, but because you may. And some of you feel cool. The most probably obvious acts of kindness, though, are on an individual level. One-on-one, where someone does something for for someone, and you say, oh, well, thank you. You didn't need to do that. I'm, I'm grateful. I'm blessed. Now, I'm not trying to instill any form of guilt trip people you know, in, in trying to get you to do things. God understands the circumstances that you, you have. And if you've got busy lives through your employment, through your family, and uh, families with young children, it's right and proper that you spend time in the family, looking after the children. They're God's blessing to you. And you can show acts of kindness within the family, and sometimes they're almost taken for granted. But kindness can be shown outside the family. I don't think it's God's will that you should defer any acts of kindness until, until you're retired or something, or you've got more time on your hands. It's a lifestyle. You live that lifestyle now, and you're guided by the Spirit now, this week next week. So how do you decide what acts of kindness to follow? What can you do? If you wanted a three-point sermon, I could add a third A. I'd call it adventure. Adventure. This is your adventure with the Holy Spirit. Say, what can I do? What can I do? Who can I bless? How can this work? To carry on the passage in Ephesians I was reading, from Ephesians 2, he talks it's by grace that you've been saved. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do which God has prepared in advance for us to do. So God doesn't want you to
busy yourself, delivering yourself in every different direction so that you're tired and fall over. If he's prepared works in advance for us to do, and his burden is easy, his yoke is light, then whatever our lifestyle stage, we can do these things. And God is with us, and he's working in it. So your acts of kindness need to be in accordance with God's direction, God's power, God's love, and God's covenant manifest in your life. So how do you do this? Well, one thing I would suggest, again, look to what David did. Look to your backstory. Look to your backstory. Um, look to your education. Look to your job. Look to your family. Look to your friends, your circumstances. What happened? Who were the people you knew? These things didn't happen by accident. If God is in control of your life, and even if some of these things are mistakes, God can use these mistakes. So look to your backstory. Who are the people involved? Pray about that. Are there, are there things which you can do about that? That can be going way back, and it could be just going over the last few days. Are there things that you can do to uh, bless someone? So backstory. Secondly, pray and reflect on this. You should always pray, Lord. What can I do in this circumstance? You may get an answer straight away. It may be even as I speak. You know, the Spirit's guiding someone here into an act of kindness to do this week, even today. Not because you have to, because you may, and you can bless someone. But it may be that as you hold this message in your heart and you encounter people, things are coming this week, the light bulb moment comes up. Oh, this is my opportunity. Well, will you take it? Will you take it? Will you be a blessing to someone else? Final reading. Just want to refer to 1 Colossians 1.10. Paul's letter to the Colossians. And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way bearing fruit in every good work and growing in the knowledge of God bearing fruit in every good work that brings us back to where we started kindness is part of the fruit of the spirit and the Lord can guide us and bless us as we do this for him. So let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your incredible act of kindness to us, the grace by which we are saved. We thank you for the giving of the Holy Spirit to all who believe and trust in you. Lord, help us to look beyond the size and difficulties of the problems we face in our lives and look to the power, the love and the strength that is in our covenant relationship with you. And Lord, will you guide us today, this week, and as we go forward in acts of kindness, which we can follow through to bring your blessing to the world in which we live. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Jesus, the only one that could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you.
such beautiful and powerful words we've heard in those songs today Um, and let's just turn that into our prayer having heard all that Rory said to us about kindness let's just turn that into our prayer holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up our eyes in wonder show us who you are and fill us with your heart and lead us in your love to those around us. Amen. Let's really pray about how we can show kindness to people this week. Rory's given us some really great practical ways, whether it's taking a test, not because you have to, but because it might help somebody else just to be able to know that you don't have COVID or probably don't. Whether it's not sharing a kind word with somebody, encouraging someone, Or maybe not saying something that you think you have every right to say to someone, but actually controlling our words and showing kindness by not doing that. And let's remember that that God is a God of love and kindness, and this isn't about burdening us with more things to do. He's, He's got just the right things for us, the right people in our past, the right ways that we can bless someone. Even if we're not able to go out, you may be watching this stuck at home and feeling that you can't do anything to reach out. But there are ways that you can show kindness to someone. Let's just ask God to show us in his love how we can be the hands and feet of Jesus this week and be kind. This world would be so much better if we could all just be that bit more kind to each other. Thank you once again for joining us today. Let's end today's service just by sharing the grace with each other. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Uh, There'll be some stewards just guiding you out for those of you who are in the sanctuary today. Just a reminder that you can um, give your um, donations to the offering at the back on your way out. Of course, you can give those online as well. That would be greatly appreciated. And that um, Joyce and Robert have the minutes and the agenda for the church meeting, which is in two weeks' time. And again, if you um, are unable to come to church, then do contact the office and Esther will try and get a copy of those out to you. And if you're not sure if you are a registered member, um, do ask her as well and we can just check that for you. And we do encourage you to come along, particularly if this is our AGM. There's lots of business that needs to be sorted out as a charity. It's important that we have functioning church meetings just to keep the life of the church moving along in these challenging times. Thank you very much. God bless to you all. Have a blessed week. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and
be gracious to you, Lord, turn his face toward you. Hey.